winning season. And the overarching aim of this series is to remind God's people that he desires and has equipped them to win. Now, this particular message that we're going to spend time with today <clears throat> focuses on having a winning circle of friends. But one of the things that I want to bring your attention to is Whenever God is going to bless you, he's always going to use a person. There is literally nothing God has ever done in the earth that he has never used a person. In fact, the scriptures say <clears throat> that he won't do anything in the earth unless he's revealed it to his prophets. God uses people as a reflection of his love for his people. And, and so what we want to do is, is help you realize what you need, not simply to, to have a winning season, but can you believe God wants you to have a winning lifestyle? God, God, God wants you to be so equipped that irregardless of whatever your physical circumstance says, you win. And so, we're, we're, we're going to journey, we're going to journey together, we're going to journey together, and I want you to say this with me, because I'm going to teach you how to prophesy, I'm going to teach you how to prophesy. Number one, the scriptures say uh, that, that all of us have the ability to prophesy. Now, everybody's not called to the office of a prophet, <clears throat> but everybody, when you have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, has the ability to speak like God and call something to be. That, that is a right of the believer when you are a believer. Now, it doesn't have to be spooky. It, it could be something simple. It could be something simple. It could be something simple like when your mind is racing, I have the mind of Christ. That's a prophetic statement. Say that with me. Say, I have the mind of Christ. Now, you're going to engage in prophetic declaration with me. I'm going to tell you to repeat after me, and then I just need you to prophesy to your own self. I want you to say this. Say, winning seasons, winning seasons. require, require. Winning, friends. winning friends. I want you to prophesy to yourself. Prophesy, prophesy to yourself. Say it till you mean it. Say, winning seasons, winning seasons. Require, require winning circles. Winning circles. I want you to prophesy to yourself. I want you to prophesy to yourself. I want you to say this. Say, my winning season, my winning season requires, requires my winning circle. My winning circle. Now, now, we prophesy that one of the things that uh, people don't really understand about prophecy, it, it is twofold. Number one, it is making a spiritual declaration. But whenever you make a spiritual declaration, there is always a natural element. There's something you're supposed to do. Now, when you do this, whatever you do, it may be big, it may be small, doesn't really matter. I think people get caught up in the nuances. But at the end of the day, it is you do something. You've decreed it. You've prophesied it. Now you've got to do your part. And what I'm going to spend the next about 15 minutes teaching you is what you do in the natural. And when you do these things in the natural, what you just prophesied has to come to pass. So, so this, is what, this is what you need to do in the natural. In the natural, you done declared, you done prophesied, you done spoke out, you done believed that you got a winning circle. Well, now you need to evaluate the circle you currently have. You, you, done, you, done, you done prophesied it. You done spoke it by faith. I got a winning circle. Well, who, who in your circle right now? Because I, I dare to believe that some of the people in your circle probably are not winning. And can you believe that because they're not winning, they're not positioning you to win? See, see what, what we need to do is we need to evaluate our circle of friends. And, and this is what the scriptures tell us in Proverbs 18, 24, that one who has unreliable friends soon come to ruin. But there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. All right. 
See, 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 what the scripture's trying to tell you is if you evaluate your circle and you realize that currently in the natural, you don't have no winning friends, what a friend you got in Jesus. <laughs> you, you, you may look at it and you may say, man, I ain't got that. I ain't got no winning friends. All my friends is broke, uh, busted, and disgusted. And that, that's fine. That's fine. Pray for them. And it depends on your friend named Jesus. The, the, the scriptures also tell us that when we have unreliable friends, that we will soon come to ruin. Well, why is that? Well, it's very simple. You become what you behold. If you become, if you're beholding people who lose, and, and, and losing is not simply like that they're down on their luck. Like, that's their mentality. Every time something happens, it's everybody's fault but them. Everybody's fault but them. They lose a job, it's the job's fault. Brother, you was late 30 days in a row. That ain't, that ain't the job's fault. That's your fault. And I ain't saying God can't have no grace, but you, you didn't even have the gumption to ask them. That, that's your fault. Every time they encounter a situation, oh, these people just don't understand me. Well, you don't even understand yourself. How are people going to understand you when you don't understand you so you don't communicate you effectively to others? When we're around people like that, we end up becoming like them. And ruin simply manifests. I'm trying to teach you how to prophesy. You flowing with me? Okay. And so it's very important that when we evaluate our friendship that we understand, well, what is reliability? Well, reliability means this. It means consistent and dependable. It means able to trust to do what is needed. Now, I'll be very honest with you. One of the people that I know is trusted and dependable. That, that no matter what the situation is, he has a tendency to always be able to do it. It's God. And when we begin to look at our winning circles, through God's principles, he has set us up to succeed. Now, now, number two, number two, I want you to understand that a, a person's reliability can be seasonal. It's important to evaluate the people in your circle as the seasons in your life begin to change. Just because a friend belongs in your circle today, does it mean they should stay there tomorrow? Who you hold on to that you need to let go? I, I, I've, come to, I've come to understand that many believers have a Captain Save Them All syndrome. We, we, want, we want to save them all. We want to save them all. We want to save them. I, I, I was a kid in the, in the, in the uh, 90s and, and early 2000s, and, and there, was a, there was a show on called Pokemon. And, and, and the catchphrase of Pokemon is, got to catch them all. Well, well, so many believers kind of got that catchphrase, I got to catch them all. Well, the issue with that is you catch people you were never supposed to. The scriptures say that there are some who plant, there are some who water, but God provides the increase. You need to begin to evaluate. Is this relationship something where well, I'm supposed to be planting? Am I supposed to be watering? As I believe God for the increase. And if you realize that you are holding on to people who you're not supposed to hold on to, hear me by the Spirit, let them go. You're not their God. Your only role is to point them to him. The, 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 the scriptures talk about point number three. That there are three things that you need to look for when it comes to having a winning circle of friends. Number one, you need to look for friends who support you. Do you have people who show up for you when, when you need them to show up, pray for you, intercede for you, call on God for you? Do you have people who just send a text message? See, support does not have to be deep. It just has to be done. Just send a text message. Do, 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 do you have people who, um, that when you succeed, they don't say nothing? 
Do, do you have people, you know, you got, you know, you win and you win and, and you, and you, and you get a, you start a business, right? You start a business and, and, and they say, how your little business doing? <laughs> how, you, how your little business doing? How your little business doing? You got, you got, you got, you got, how your little business doing? How your little business doing? You got, you got people like that, how your little business doing? But, but, well, well, if you got people like that and everything you do is little and not reflective of the big God you serve, don't get mad at them. I don't get mad. I often think we give people too much credit. Maya Angelou said it like this. If people show you who they are, <laughs> believe them the first time. <laughs> now you're sitting there mad at a snake for being a snake. You're the one that went in the snake pen. Let that snake go do what it do. And God's going to send you a winning circle. Now, now, the other thing we have to do is gauge the spiritual maturity of our circle. See, you need people in your circle who know how to pray when you don't have the language. You, you need people who, who, who can hear from God by the Spirit and begin to intercede on your behalf. So breakthrough is your reality. And you may be looking like, I, I, Emmanuel, you saying these things, and I, I, ain't, I, ain't got, I ain't got none of it. Don't worry, we're about to call them in. We're going to call in your winning circle. We're going to call your winning circle. And before you leave here, you go win today. you go win here today. you go win today. Now, now, and, then, and, then, and, then, and then you need people in your circle who have enough faith to believe God in the middle of adversity. Now, I'm going to spend about two minutes here because I, I got I to talk about this one real quick. I'll talk about this one and, and then, and then I'm going to flow on what I do. I'm going to talk about this one. You know, the, the, the scripture reference for this is about Job. Job chapter 2, verse 9. And then his wife said to him, do you, do you still cling to your integrity and your faith and trust in God without blaming him? Curse God and die. Well, why is that? Because, you know, Job and his wife done lost everything in 30 seconds. They lost their children, they lost their money, they lost their homes, they lost their possessions, they lost everything. And Mrs. Job, bless her heart, you know, Mrs. Job, I'm sure she was in love with Mr. Job. I'm sure she was. Doesn't seem like Mrs. Job was, was such a bad person, but what Mrs. Job was is someone who had just experienced trauma. And we all know that when we experience trauma, we often say things that we shouldn't say. For one, I'm so glad I ain't married to Mrs. Job. I ain't married to Mrs. Job. I'm, I'm married to Mrs. Jaquees. Mrs. Jaquees is who I'm married to. We have been married for 12 years, together for 14. Thank you. God has blessed me because I did not deserve her. But recently I had to go out of town and, and I misjudged what time my flight left. By the time I realized that my flight was leaving an hour earlier than I expected, I hadn't packed. I had to take a shower, and I was just lounging around. I got time. I got time. I got time. My phone dings, and, 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 and it says, boarding starts in 30 minutes. <clears throat> I jump up, and, and Jaquisa took the day off work. I jump up, and I, I, I said, Jaquis, I said, the flight leaves early. And she said, well, what you want me to do? Now, my wife knows me. My wife knows the clothes I like. She knew where I was going. She, 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 she knows me. My wife knows her husband and his proclivities. So I release her to be her. I said, pack my suitcase. <laughs> I said, and as I pack my suitcase, I'm going to go, and I am going to take a shower, and we're going to leave. So she packs my suitcase. She, she gets my little garment bag together. I, I take a shower. I put on some clothes. I go. We get in the car. We head to, to the airport. And, and on the way to the airport, she's asking me questions. What do you want to do? What do you want to do? Do you want me to drive you to Huntsville in Atlanta? And I said, no, 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 no. I said, I don't want you on the road that much. And she said, well, man, it don't, it don't look like you're going to make your flight. I said, I said, that's fine. I said, let me pray. And she's been with me long enough to, she said, okay. I prayed and I heard the Holy Ghost say, speak to the time. And I said, speak to the time. He said, yeah. I said, oh, okay. I said, the flight delayed. She, she said, she said, maybe what did the Lord tell you? I said, the flight is delayed. <laughs> I said, the flight is delayed. She said, she said, well, what do you want me to do? I said, just say you agree. <laughs> if you just say you agree, I'll 
do the heavy lifting, just say you agree. So on the way there, on the way to the airport, on the way to the airport, I, I'm declaring it's the flight is delayed. The flight is delayed. The flight is delayed. Father, you said in your word that if we ask anything of you, you will give it to us. The flight is delayed. Father, I thank you now in Jesus' name, the flight is delayed. I get to the airport exit and my phone dings. Flight delayed by 15 minutes. I'm trying to, I'm trying to teach you how to prophesy because I said, no, 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 I, I need more time. I said, because the scriptures say, beautiful are the, are the feet of those who carry the gospel. I don't run. And you know, and I ain't about to be running through the airport. That's tacky. Everybody judged the person who run through the airport. Everybody, you be judging them and they should have left on time. Everybody judge them. And so I said, I ain't nobody judging me. I said, the fight is delayed by another 20 minutes. And Chris looked at me and she said, what do I say? I said, say you agree. That's all I need. She said, well, I agree. I get to the, to, 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 to the gate and my phone dings again. It says flight delayed by another 20 minutes. <laughs> I, I, I text her, I took her a screenshot. I, scre I said, it'll be what you call it. <laughs> it it'll, be, it'll be what you call it. See, you need some friends that when you are having to speak by faith, and your faith defies your natural limitation. If they have no other language, but I agree, that is enough that you need to embrace everything that God has for you. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I got a little bit more to go. I got a little bit more to go. I can't get happy yet. Got a little bit more to go. You, you also need friends. You also need friends who provide accountability. Yeah. The scriptures say in Proverbs 27, 5, that a good friend will openly correct you. Yeah. It says in Ecclesiastes 4 and 12 that two people can resist an attack that would defeat one person alone. Y'all need some friends. Now, 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 up until a day ago, I, I, Pastor Michael Kay and I, we, we, we met and we, we we, we, we strategized on how we were going to dance through this message. And, and I was settled. I was settled. I was good. I was good. Then yesterday at my son's baseball game, I'm minding, I like to say, I be minding my black own business. I be, I be minding my own business. I, be, I was in there. I was sitting at the, at, the, at, the, at the bench, and I was eating some chicken. I love chicken wings. I was eating some chicken. And then... I, I, I tell people that, that my prayer time with God, I do have a formalized time. I do have a time in the morning where I spend about an hour. I spend about an hour speeding tongues, hollering, snotting, doing all that kind of stuff. I, I do all that. But then when I leave there, my prayer is dwell with me like you did with Adam and Enoch. You dwelled with them throughout the day. You popped in on them whenever you wanted to pop in on them. So you have free reign to pop in on me whenever you wanted to pop in on me. Now when you give God that type of blink check, he cashes it. And so I'm sitting at my son's baseball game and the Holy Ghost just downloaded. And I said, oh. I said, now, I said, why you? I said, I, is this what I'm supposed to do? He said, I want you to show them what you just taught them. And I said, well, how do I show them that? He said, you ain't got to show them. I already set it up in my word. I need you to bring it to life. And I said, I said, okay, I, I said, okay, I said, okay. Um, and so I want to introduce to you, I want to introduce to you, I want to introduce to you one of the first winning circles. I want to introduce to you one of the first winning circles. If, if, if I can have Shadrach come out, Shadrach, Shadrach, I need you to come out. I don't know which way Shadrach is coming. <laughs> Sh there we go. There we go, Shadrach. Hey, Shadrach. How you doing, Shadrach? Sh Shadrach, I want you right here. I want you right here. Thank you, Shadrach. Just, just sit on down and, and, and let the people behold your beauty. All right, and, and now I need Meshach. Meshach, I need you to come on out. I need you to come on out, Meshach. I need you to come on out. Uh, Y'all, I, I want you to meet Meshach. I want you to meet Meshach. Give it up for Meshach. Give it up for Meshach. And then I, I want you to meet, man, he's one of Pastor Mike's great friends. 
Pastor Mike doesn't even get this man a nickname. Pastor Mike and this man go way back like four flats on a Cadillac. I want you to meet Abendigo. Uh, Abendigo, come on out here, Abendigo. Uh, Abendigo, come on out here. Yeah, this is Abendigo. Now, th there was actually a fourth friend in, in, in this scenario, but, but he wasn't there. I, I believe he was on vacation. His name was Daniel. Now, the reason I know that eventually Daniel must have been filled in about their situation is because he's the one who told the story. Let, let me help you real quick. See, there are some friends that you need who might not be in the same situation with you, but they tell your story. Come on now. See, 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 I need you to understand that there's some people in your winning circle, you may not physically see them, but when you tell them what God did for you, they become your evangelists and they take your message across the world. That's what Daniel did for his friends. I, I, I want you to understand that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were advisors to King Nebuchadnezzar. And, and the scriptures tell us in, 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 in Daniel that as they were adolescents, they were taken from their homeland and they were sent to Babylon. The scriptures tell us that when Nebuchadnezzar told his officials to go get men from Jude, uh, Judah, he said, go get the ones from the royal and the noble families. He's very specific about who he wanted. What that, what that tells me is even before Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego went into cap cap captivity, they were winning people. They came from a winning situation. They came from a winning mindset. In fact, the scriptures say that when they were in captivity and when they came and they had to pass all these tests, the scriptures say that they told the king's official, we ain't gonna eat the king's food. We will have a diet of water and vegetables. And when they stuck to their diet of water and vegetables, they outperformed everybody else. Yeah. See, 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 when, when, when the Holy Ghost gave me this download, he said, I need you to know that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had a theme song. I said they had a theme song. I said they had a theme song. I said, well, what was the theme song? And the Holy Spirit said their theme song was, all I do is win, 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 no matter what. Got prosperity on my mind, I have more than enough. And every time I step up in the building, everybody's hands go up. And they stay there, and they stay there. He, he said, he said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, winning was all they knew. So, so they had a theme song, I said, sing it again. He said, their theme song was, all I do is win, 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 no matter what. Got prosperity on my mind, I have more than enough. And every time I walk up in the building, everybody's hands go up yeah. and they stay there. He, he, he said they got a theme song. So, so I said, oh, all, okay, okay. I said, I'll give it to the people. <clears throat> and he said, but I want you to give the people theirs. I want the people to know that, that they have a theme song. And I said, Lord, but what is that theme song? He said, I want you to tell the people that they are to prophesy. All I do is win. All I do is win. Make that your confession. See, 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 God's going to teach us through Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But what he needs you to begin to come into agreement with is all you do is win. All you do is win. Can y'all receive that? Can, can, can you receive that? I'm trying to set an atmosphere now. All you do is win. You feel that? <laughs> you feel that? Oh, I need you to say it one more time. All you do is win. It's hit the ball. All I do is win. Make that your declaration. 
Make that your declaration. Make that your declaration. All I do is win. It doesn't matter the situation. It doesn't matter the circumstance. It doesn't matter what it looks like. I partner with the Holy Ghost and I declare. Hey, hey, He said that. All I do is win. That's your behold. I want you to hear it by the Holy Ghost. Hey, come on, say it one more time. Say it one more time. All you do. See, 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 what happens is you got this group Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And, and what, what, what people didn't understand is that that, that wasn't their names. They, they had birth names. They, they, they had birth names. And, and the scriptures say that Shadrach's birth name was Hananiah. That means the Lord has been gracious. The scripture said that Meshach's birth name was Mishael. That means who is like God. The, the scripture said that Abednego's birth name was Azariah. That means help my God. See, you need to make sure that the people in your winning circle have a connection to the Lord. There should be some purpose that they just have intuitively. That you're not with broke, you're not with disgusted, you're with people who reflect the Father. Because let me tell you what happened, let me tell you what happened, right? So the king sends an edict, and the king says, everybody who worships this statue, everybody who worships this statue, they're going to live, and if you don't worship the statue, you're going to die. Now, now, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were in the royal service. Right? So they got the email. But they were all friends. And I can imagine that when they got the email, they huddled up amongst each other. And, 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 and Shadrach, Shadrach, who, whose name means, Shadrach, whose name means the Lord has been gracious, Shadrach has a human moment. Because uh, even Superman needs a place to be caught pet. <laughs> Shadrach begins to say to the other two, y'all, I don't know why Nebuchadnezzar would do this to me. I've been faithful to Nebuchadnezzar. I, I, don't, I don't know why Nebuchadnezzar would put me in this situation. I've always turned my reports in on time. I've paid my bills. I've honored my wife. I, 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 I'm there for my children. Why would Nebuchadnezzar put me in a situation where I would have to deny who God is? I, 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 I don't, don't want to do that. Uh, but he got a winning circle. And so, Ezra says to, 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 to Shadrach, he said, don't you remember how the Lord's been gracious to you? Yeah. Don't, don't, don't you remember how God brought you out? Don't, don't you remember how God made a way? Don't you remember that it looked like you weren't going to make it? What is a fiery furnace to the God who parts red seas? And so now, he done got encouraged in the Lord. But, but he ain't the only one in the circle. He ain't the only one in the circle. Now, now Azra, he got a moment. Now, the scriptures tell us that Azra, Azra's name means, it means, it means, it means, help my God. So he has a moment. Man, you know, at least, at least y'all two brothers got wives. Y'all got families. Y'all got loved ones. I, I'm fine and single. Don't nobody want me. And now I'm going to face a fiery furnace. And, 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 and then one of the brothers in the group said, but wait a minute. Do you remember how when your rent was due and it was due at 12 midnight 
and God came through at 1130. Do, do, do you remember when God did what he said he was going to do and he helped you? And I believe uh, that he was encouraged in the Lord. But, but, but that he ain't the only one. He ain't the only one. You got, you got, you got Mishael here who, whose name means who is like God. Uh, and now he has his moment where he's lamenting and he says, uh, you know, I just, I just, I just got promoted and, and, and who told Daniel to go on vacation? Every time Daniel goes on vacation, the king listens to these wicked people and they go cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs and Daniel talking about, I'm in charge. Daniel can have his job back. I don't want this job. I don't want these people. I don't want these responsibilities. And the group says, but Michelle, your, your name means who is like God. Everything you do blesses. The, your, your name means who who is like God? You got the Midas touch. Your name means who is like God and you are the personification of the Lord Jesus Christ. What is a fiery furnace? The, 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 they circle, encouraged each other, empowered each other. Their circle interceded for each other. So let me tell you what happens when you get a group of community who empowers you in the Lord. See, see, I believe that as they were encouraging each other, a holy visitation occurred. I, I believe that as they were encouraging each other, the scriptures say over in the, in, in, later on in, in the series, the scriptures say that when they were thrown into the fire, LP, I, I need you, I need you to sit, put your chair right here. The scriptures say that they were thrown into the fire, Nebuchadnezzar looked down, and he said, but there's a fourth man who looks like the Son of God. I am of the belief that the fourth man did not appear in the fire. I think that as they were encouraging each other, as they were setting a place where God could dwell, as they were interceding for each other, God himself came and sat down. Because the only person I know that can defy limitations is the Lord Jesus Christ. It's something about when you got the right group of people that the Holy Ghost, hey, my mind of a hope, the Holy Ghost will show up. The Holy Ghost will show up. The Holy Ghost will show up. So, let me tell you what happened because I gotta, I gotta finish my story. I gotta finish my story. So, 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 so the Holy Spirit show up and the men, they get bound and, and they, they get thrown in the fire, right? Now, Holy Spirit is already with them. Other people don't see it. They know it because when God is with you, I want you to hear me by faith. When God is with you, when God is with you, Whatever the result is supposed to be, it's of no effect. See, with the Holy Ghost, with God with them, they get thrown in the fire. Nebuchadnezzar got mad. He said, turn that heat up seven times. He looks and he sees the four men in the fire. He says, bring them out. The, the four men come out and the scriptures say that they don't smell like smoke. The scriptures say that their clothes were still intact. The scriptures say that their hair was still in place. Can I offer to you that when you have the right community with you and when you have the right circle, when you come through your adversity, there will be no residue. You won't smell like you went through it. You won't look like you went through it. You won't talk like you went through it. As a matter of fact, Nebuchadnezzar was so impressed that Nebuchadnezzar said, everybody must now acknowledge the Lord God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He said, and if you talk against that God, I will take your possessions and I will tear you from limb to limb. Could it be? that God wants your enemy to begin to declare his name, but you need a wedding circle. You need a wedding circle. You need a wedding circle. Hey, am I double hope? So, 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 
talk, 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 talk. Not only did they come out, and not only did everybody have to recognize who their God was, the scriptures say they were promoted. Could it be that your promotion lies in your community? Could it be you trying to do this by yourself? <laughs> Let me help you something. The Lord told me one day, he said, Emmanuel, you can either have the credit or you can have the benefits. And I said, I said, well, I don't like that. I said, I want both. I want the credit and the benefits. And the Holy Spirit said, he said, you can have it. He said, but for what I'm about to do through you, it's so weighty that if you took the credit, it'll crush you. He said, but, but if you always give me the credit, I will bear up the weight and the benefit to be yours to enjoy. Hear me by the Spirit. You sitting there trying to do it by yourself. Let me tell you something. When you divorce yourself from the credit, you experience the miracle. You better divorce yourself from the credit. You don't need the credit. When they ask you how did it happen, his name is Jesus. When they ask you who made a way, his name is Jesus. When they ask you how did it happen, say the Lord did it. And it is marvelous in my eyes. It don't make no sense to me, but I know it's my lived reality. So Father, I thank you. God wants you to have a winning circle. And God has given you God has given you the words to speak it into existence. I, 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 I believe, I believe he woke me up. He woke me up, he woke me up, he woke me up. And he said, teach my people what they are to proclaim. All I do is win. All I do is win. I want you to receive that. I want you to receive that. All I do is minutes I want you to, be, to become one with that confession all I do is win all I do all I do I want you to talk to your situation I want you to prophesy all I do is win all you do I want you to know, I want you to know, I want you to know, hey, we all I do. Now, I got some more on my notes, but I'm going, I'm going, I'm going to end that right here. You don't spoke that thing. You don't spoke that thing. So let me give you some prophetic insight. That when you make a determination, you make a determination that you're going to stand on the word. You make a determination that you're going to speak what God speaks that you're believing God for a winning team. You're believing that as you get a winning team, that the Lord will abide and that community will empower you to prosper. I, I, I want you to be very sober that even as you proclaim it, you got a real enemy. See, 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 this is the part about prophecy that is not often taught that often connected to a prophetic move is warfare. 
when, when, when a word goes out, an attack just, and it come out of nowhere, and seemingly, right? It ain't out of nowhere, it's the devil. But, but, but to us, it comes out of nowhere because we get so caught up on the word that we forgot the strategy. See, see, God will give you a prophetic word and then he'll give you a prophetic strategy so that as long as you employ the strategy, the warfare will be not, not effective. You, you're building yourself up in the spirit of man. You're building yourself up in God's word. You're decreeing what he has already declared. So Emmanuel, what's the strategy? You need to get in a group. Now I done told you, we're prophesying your community. Here at Faith Chapel, we got one in circles. We got them. We got them. We got them. They're all around us. We got them here. How do I know we got them? Because I need them. We got them. The reason you want to get in your winning circle is so that when the warfare comes, you got brothers to bear arms. You're not alone. You're not facing it by yourself. You got a Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego whose very presence reminds you of the God in you and the God you serve. And, and this winning circle, this winning circle, this winning circle, it becomes the prophecy itself. That the winning is not necessarily whatever you gain is not the new job. The winning it's not the car. The winning is not the new house. The winning is relationships. The winning is relationships. Remember I told you that whenever God is going to bless you, he's going to use a person. You get so caught up on the thing, you missed the avenue he about to bring it through. But when you set your face like flint, oh, that I'm focused on winning in relationships. I'm focused on winning in my winning circle. I believe it was the collective faith of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that cultivated the atmosphere for God to dwell. See, see, people focus on the fact that God delivered them out the fire and furnace. I believe God did that. Thank you, God. The scripture said, let's roll with it. But I'm just amazed that in the face of adversity, a relationship stood the test of time. In the, in the, in the face of death, three men banded together in God and they spoke to a thing. Okay. And they saw what their faith produced. Okay. That tells me that my attention can no longer be on the object, but on the God and the people he uses. You need to be in a winning circle. Online, you need to be in a winning circle. Columbus, you need to be in a winning circle. And if you don't remember anything else, that this man of God heard from heaven and, and shared. Number one, I teach you how to prophesy. That's what, I, that's what I do. And then when I teach you how to prophesy, I teach you how to walk into it. I, I, I did that. But I want you to be rooted in this confession so that as life is life you are reminded all you do is Win. All I do is win. Receive that in the name of Jesus. Thank you, gentlemen. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Hallelujah. 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 So, 
I want y'all to go and visit www.faithchapel.net forward slash groups. There's a group for you. There's a circle for you. There's a winning community.